Okay, so just want to welcome everybody tonight. My name is Uncle Bruce, and I'm with English Brazil. And I'll show our little logo here right now. And so here we are with the website for English Brazil. And this is a place where you can learn English, how to speak English. And Angela is with us tonight. She's one of our teachers and organizers. Yeah. This is the website here for John's company, Siplus, right? Is that how you pronounce it, John? It's actually Siplus. Siplus. Yes. Yeah, Siplus is correct. That's right. I'm. You know. <laughs> And All we'll right. Talk so, a little bit about the origin of the name. Yes, tell us a little bit about the origin of your name and your company. Okay. Uh, uh, today we use a protocol in telephone communications called SIP. Okay. What is that? It's a session initiating protocol. Mm. I'm going to take a sip of water. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> and Pulses, because traditionally telephony system used to work with electrical pulses, uh, pulses on a on a electrical line. Okay, mm -hmm. it used to be electrical. It's still mm -hmm. electrical, but it's, uh, the voltage today is much lower than it used to be. So it's uh, uh, the name SIP is for the new technology that everything uses, including Zoom. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a, it's a standard imposed by the IETF, which is an internet uh, governing, internet technology governing organization. Okay. So every, everybody has to use a st uh, what we call in the industry a SIP stack. Okay, and uh, uh, SIP pools uses one of the four main variation of the SIP stack available in the world. Okay. Which is developed by a few guys out of Romania, United States and Brazil. One of one of the guys is, is one of our partners here. Uh, and and it's called Open SIPs. This group is called Open SIPs and anything like uh, Skype, um, I I don't I'm not sure about Zoom, but uh, Face uh, WhatsApp uses it, and Google uses it as as its protocol to communicate with voice. Okay. And now uh, media. There's a there's a, traditionally telephone systems would only talk only use voice, and now. They handle messaging and they handle video, anything, everything is integrated in the same protocol. Okay. So this is one of the trends that we're going to talk about tonight. All right. Um, okay. So um, I have a lot of questions to ask you, um, and I indicated some of the questions to you already. Um, one main question I have is that since most people use cell phones these days, how relevant is a fixed phone? Well, this, this is one very interesting thing. Uh, the fixed phone, it's a no technology, okay? It's, I think that was a break, breakthrough in communication was the fixed line communications. Uh, the mobile phone, it's the trend nowadays because mm -hmm. nobody wants to be attached to a fixed point in their house or office to talk over the phone to communicate to somebody, okay? So, uh, however, mobile communications uses a lot of fixed infrastructure to get people to talk. Right. And there's a trend where the technology that we use today in the fixed lines and the technology that used to support the mobile lines are the same. They are the same? Okay, they are the same. Oh. The only difference is it's just like using our Wi-Fi. Today, now, at this moment, I'm not connected to any cables to connect to the internet. Okay, it's just a different technology, a, a bit different between the 5G that we have today and the Wi-Fi that we have at home. But we are actually wo uh, uh, talking over a, a non-physical connection uh, to get 
to talk to each other, to mm -hmm. exchange video, to exchange messages. So in, in a few years, there's not going to be any difference between the mobile and the fixed line communications. Mm -hmm. But there's a caveat to that. If you look at businesses, uh, and this is where we are putting a lot of our strength, uh, when, when, when I'm talking on behalf of my company, on my personal mobile phone, that's a big problem. Because the, any information that I exchange with our customers using a personal phone does not belong to the company anymore. It belongs to me. And on the other side, to the person that's talking to me. Mm -hmm. So for, for companies or corporations using personal devices, and if you look both in the US and here in Brazil, uh, uh, the, the, the business model for the mobile phones are for personal use, not for corporate, corporate use. So this is one of the breakthroughs that we're working on is to get uh, to converge the fixed services into the mobile services. So one company, companies can use uh, uh, cell phones uh, where can, they can manage the information that's communicated through the services or through the system. Well, do most people, do most companies still use fixed phones these days? I'm sorry, I lost you just a second. Yes. Okay, I'm back. Yes. Do most companies still use fixed phones these days? Well, there's a lot of, well, let me give you some numbers in Brazil. And then this is uh, provided by the, by the governing organization, the, the, Conceding authority here in Brazil, Anatel. We have about 220 million mobile lines, activated mobile lines in Brazil. That's enough okay. for every person in Brazil. <laughs> yes, but including the babies. <laughs> including babies. The problem is that have you ever uh, changed your services provider in your mobile services? Yes. Okay. Every time you move, you create uh, an alias number so that you can you cannot use the same number okay the original the, the the number you have in your phone today it belongs under quotes to the original company that provided you the number and what they do is when when you moved from vivo to to claro for example claro will have uh, we associate your number, which was provided by Vivo, to one of their numbers. So every time you move, and there's about maybe 60 million uh, moves have been made in Brazil so far. Mm -hmm. Out of this 220, 60 million are aliases. They are not wow. actual numbers in use by, by people. That's interesting. Okay. I did not know that. Yeah, the other the other thing is, there's a lot of call centers because of the regulations that they are trying to protect our interests as citizens. That they buy, uh, there's a device where you stick a lot of uh, of of SIM cell uh, SIM cards, and you get a lot of car a lot of calls using a mobile number. And if you call back to them, that, that number is not valid. Actually, what these companies use is they buy these chips to make you call, so aleatory calls, they, they change this dynamically, the number dynamically, so they can trick you into answering the call. Because if you know, it, it, you will memorize a number. Well, this number is a, from a call center who wants to try to sell me something. I, I always block them. I block them. <laughs> yeah, well... That is not good for the system because, <laughs> well, frankly, if you if you look at the tef telephony services, this is this is something which is a public services that should be working for citizens' interest. Mm -hmm. For example, if you need to call the police, you cannot have people blocking numbers. Okay, if the bank needs to call you because of they 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 are suspicious of a fraud. 
in your bank account and you don't answer the call because you don't recognize the number, you are Jap you are in risk. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's some interest movements uh, made by the FCC in the US and now Brazil is adopting the same uh, approach. There's a there's a um, Traced Call Act, mm -hmm. which was passed by the US Congress in January 2019, that stipulates that every call has to have a digital certificate attached to it. So you can prove the validity of that call and prevent people from calling you using your own number to get in touch with you or faking the, the number that, that originates the call. Well, this happens this a lot about telemarketing. Telemarketing, you know, they're always calling us. Yes. And this is, uh, Anatel here in Brazil just passed the led or a regulation, not a legislation. In the U.S., it's a, it's a law passed by Congress that will forbid companies to change the numbers and use a number which actually doesn't belong to the company that's calling you. Mm. Okay, this is the first step, and this is, and I will give you some numbers. The first step that uh, that Anatel passed was the uh, uh, obligation to use. A, a definite prefix number 0303 okay and i'll tell you the impact on the bit on the on the sector that that happened after this this regulation was passed we had a customer that made around 250 million calls a day wow okay because they have to keep their business going and they will try to call you. They will, they will call Lucas, they will call John, they will call Sandra, they will call everybody as much as they can to make sure that at least two to 3% of the calls they make gets through. Okay, because this will, this, this percentage will be enough to make the business, uh, their business or their customer's business uh, uh, flow, okay? After Anatel passed this legislation, this, this company went down from 250 million to 30 million. Mm. So it's already a, a, a step forward into cleaning the way that uh, the system works. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second step will be that from January 1st, 2024, the originating company and the company that places the call, the operator that places the call, will have to attach a digital certificate to make sure that if my, if my service provider is Vivo and yours is Claro, when Claro gets the call from, from Vivo, they will be sure that that call was originated by Vivo. Because there's a lot of companies here in Brazil that pretend that that impersonates Vivo and send the call forward. Mm. And this is a fraud to the system. It's a fraud to you and it's a fraud to the system. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we are advocating City Pulse and some other companies. There are some companies fighting this because they're gonna lose money. Okay, but the system needs this because they need to to have the, to earn back the trust of the consumers mm -hmm. okay the, the, the third step will be not only the phone company will have to add a certificate but the originating business will add a logo certificate to the call so if your bank calls you and several show, showing up the number which can be faked they're gonna show the in your cell phone. You're gonna see the logo of your bank with a certificate digital validation. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna be sure that you're getting a, a call from Bradesco or Casha or whatever. A legitimate company. A legitimate company. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this will help a lot. Of course, 
the originating company, the originating business will have to pay for that because there's a cost to it. But the benefits they will get from validating the call supersedes the cost by far. Okay. Uh, the cost of the of the implement implementing this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you will be sure that whenever you get a call from Bradesco, it's gonna be from Bradesco. Yeah. Because how does this work today? If I have a PBX in my company and I know that Bradesco number is 30302145, I can set my PBX to send when they send when it sends out a, a phone call, it uses 30301245. Okay, so you have 30301245 registering your cell phone as Bradesco. But you're not getting a call from this. You're getting a call from me. Okay, this can be done in the system. Oh, today. that's scary. Yes, I can call you using your phone number. Yes, I need to know the uh, the password for your account. <laughs> it happens. You know, you know how I can seal your password. How? You, I call one of your services providers where you have a password. And I request a password reset. Mm -hmm. And one of the alternatives to send a password is by a phone call. Right. Which most people ask for because they send it, it's more, they, they feel it's more safe than getting an email. So I call the bank, I call your bank, and I call and I actually I go into the web and I ask for a password reset, send me by phone. Okay. At the same time, because this is very, very speedy, okay? At the same time, I call your cell phone. And when the bank calls you with a fake call, I call you with a fake call. When the bank calls you with a password, the password sends your mailbox, okay? Mm -hmm. And I call you to make sure that your line is busy so the password gets sent to your, uh, to your voicemail. Few minutes later, I'll go back. I'll call your number using your number. What what happens is your phone company will send this call directly into your voicemail to retrieve all to retrieve all the voice messages that I have that you have there. One of it, one of the messages has your password. Mm. Okay, so this is a way to fraud you to scam you. Wow. Okay. And I get your password. Crazy. And now I can and now I can go into your bank and see how much money you have. I don't know if I want to make this uh this video public, man. It's, it's too risky. <laughs> well, the good news, well, you can you can learn that on the internet anyways. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's crazy, man. Yeah. I, I it's 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 frightening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in 2019, there's a there's a international or organization called FCPA. Oh, it's not FCPA. It's a it's a, I'm I, I forgot it, but it come will come back to me. Okay. But every year, they publish the the volume of frauds that they've identified in the telephony system. Do you have any hint of how, how big that is per year? Um, how much money is lost for fraud? Oh, I would probably say probably billion. I don't know. 15 billion. 15 billion? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's about 10 ways that the telephony system can be fraud today because the way it has been set up. Okay. Now, Technology is advancing much faster than the regulations that govern the, the, the telephony environment. Okay, so this is why there's a lot of, of opportunities for fraud. Mm -hmm. Okay, now thankfully, uh, the, the FCC has started uh, making provisions to, to curb uh, fraud 
uh, the U.S. Congress approved that, and a lot of co countries in the world are, are uh, copying what the U.S. did. Brazil is one of them. Mm -hmm. So this is going to help uh, bring back the, the trust that the system needs from the public mm -hmm. uh, to use the telephony system. Well, what are some new technologies in telecommunications that have really changed our way of doing business? I know well, there aren't many, but say the most current ones over the last year that you've seen come through. Well, it's the last last few years hasn't changed much. Okay, we've seen, and the during the COVID pandemic in twenty twenty, we've seen a lot of. Uh, technologies that were previously uh, available uh, being more used. One of them is Zoom. Mm -hmm. Zoom was a very small company, almost failing before the pandemic. And it thrived in the pandemic. And now with all this uh, this uh, opportunity for home working and, and the changes that the pandemic have accelerated in, in the way that we work. Okay, so... This has brought some, some possibilities, but also some threats, especially for uh, businesses. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll go a little bit further on that. But let me go back to 1994 a little bit. And, and then I'll go back to 1980, 1990, just to make, just to compare some businesses that have changed a lot. And... Uh, and I'll explain what I say. It's the it's the death of the telephony services. Okay. Okay. But the but the first one was something very interesting. In 1994, Boeing, the aircraft manufacturer, came out with a report that by the end, by by the mid 2000 millennium or maybe that's too much, but, but 2050, before 2050, the, the vast majority of the airplanes that would, that the travel, uh, passenger travel would be tourist related, not business tourists, personal tourists. And the vast majority of the aircrafts being manufactured would be des uh, destined to cargo operations not passengers operations anymore because of the communication services. Okay, so business would not be the biggest customer for passenger transportation anymore, which is a reality already. Okay, tourism is much bigger than, than business. And the biggest example is that you don't have that many offer of business class and first class anymore. No, Those people are not, not really. willing to pay, not willing to pay the the what it costs to to travel with comfort okay and when you're doing tourism paying out of your own pocket you don't want to spend money in the airline you want to spend money in the hotel and the restaurants in the tours mm -hmm. in your leisure time but not sitting down on a cramped dirty place sleeping beside somebody you've never saw in your life and there you are. Okay, but anyway, this is not the, the topic here. So this was a report out of a, that came came out of Boeing in 1994. At that time, I was working with some airline related projects. So this is how I got access to that. Okay, and going a little bit further back, if you go to 1990, I don't know if you're living in Brazil at that time or not. No. But and that and that year brazil 90 percent of the all the payments made in brazil was made using a check okay you have to sign a check you would have to pay bills if you had to pay bills you had to go to the bank with a check write it down give it to the cashier the cashier would stamp your payment that that was it okay now you fast forward to 2020 and you'll find out that it was 90% of all the payments made in Brazil without considering cash payments, okay? Just between credit cards and checks. You fast forward to 2020, and that's less than 2% of the payments were made by with uh, checks, using checks. I you have the PICS in Brazil, you have wire transfer, you have 
uh, touchless cards. You have your credit card and your cell phone. There's a lot of payments, but you don't need checks anymore. For business telephony, it's going to have the same destiny. If you insist in the technology that the old telephony systems have, we're going to die because nobody wants to talk on the telephone anymore. They want to communicate. You can, we're communicating with my computer here. And even wait, if wait, I wait. was I'm used- I'm gonna use my watch and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a video of you today, right now. <laughs> exactly. So the, the old device that you would put on your uh, uh, work desk, which costs a lot of money, by the way, mm -hmm. doesn't have any use anymore. Okay, I don't have, I work in a telephony company. I don't have a physical te uh, telephony anymore. And my mobile is not a telephony anymore. It's a computer device where I have a software, a software which I use to communicate with my company mm -hmm. using voice or message or whatever. Okay, in the future, we'll have a solution that will compete with the Zoom with a few difference, mm -hmm. but I'll, which I can explain. But the fact is, that communication is not about telephone anymore. It's about using whatever technology is available to you, uh, using either a voice, a message, or a video call, okay? And for companies, the most important thing is that this, this communication needs to be connected to your business. It cannot be detached. If you use a regular phone, when when I'm representing CP Pulse, talking to Bruce, representing your company, the information that we're exchanging or sending a WhatsApp message, the information that we're exchanging doesn't belong to the company, it belongs to us. Mm -hmm. In spite of the fact that we're talking, representing our company. And this is a big problem for companies because in some countries, this whatever agreement we reach over the phone is a valid agreement. As long as it's been recorded by either side, I can go to court and you can go to court and sue me because I didn't meet up with that, meet up with what we had agreed on the phone. Okay. So it's very important that companies. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> but, yeah. But it's reality. It is a reality. So for me, it's for, for CP Pulse, it's very important that if you're talking on behalf of a company, this company has control over the information that you're passing on or getting through this, through this device. I'll give you an example. And uh, I, this, this is my cell phone. This is the company number paid for by CP Pulse. But CP Pulse does not have any access to whatever message I send through WhatsApp here. Okay? Right. It's all um, blocked through some type of coding system, right? Yeah, it's coding and Security. they don't have access to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I use a PBX to talk to you, I can record that phone over there. Okay. CP Pulse will have access to that phone call. That's fair enough. But if CP Pulse wants five, five to 12 months from now to recover this information, it's going to spend a lot of time digging for it. It's not indexed. It's not attached to any CRM backend system or corporate management system that will allow us to, to recover that information easily. Okay, so it's a useless information. Well, okay. if you store this information on a hard drive or in the cloud, then it's available if you know where to it find it. It is. If you know where it to is, find. but you have to have an index. And there's something different here also that we're trying uh, that we're that we're trying to bring to the market. It's giving a context to that communications. Mm -hmm. uh, what what does that mean? Let me say. And I'm going to use, well, you want to call your airline to make a complaint or you want to call the bank, which by the way, I was complaining with my bank a few minutes earlier. <laughs> uh, and then 
it's all recorded in back. The first thing, the f first thing is we have to 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 overcome the barrier of a, ro a robot trying to talk to you, okay? Which is annoying enough. Okay? It is. So we have to make that we have to make that better. So now the banks give give gives me an information which doesn't sac satisfy my problem. It's not my problem. It's their problem that they created to me. So the next step, I have to write an email to my bank manager or call her in the morning. She will not have access to the information that the guy gave me today. Mm. It's going to take her between 10 and 15 days to wow. recover that information because it's That's not crazy. indexed. It's not linked to any business process related to my person, to me as a customer, to the bank. So what we're trying to do is what we are doing developing is creating context where you can store that call the same way you do as your with your email you mm -hmm. click and drag it to a folder mm -hmm. we're going to do the same thing to phone calls we're doing it actually already uh to phone calls to messages that you get here okay so if you if, if we have a message system that connects to instagram to WhatsApp. So you get an, uh, a WhatsApp message from a customer and you want to store that information into a folder. Okay, we're talking about a proposal for a new telephony system with customer X. So you create a folder X telephony system and you drag that call over there and it's going to be indexed there the same way as your email. So it's going to be like time, in, a, in a cloud system, right? A storage in the cloud. Yeah, all is in a cloud system. Okay. It depends on the size of the cloud. It might be a small cloud or a cumulus nimbus, but it's going to be in a cloud. You don't need to have a dedicated equipment for that anymore. Okay. Actually, today you don't have, you don't even have telephony, uh, telephones in your desk anymore. You can use my 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 extensions my on my computer on my my cell phone. So this is the first step that we're taking is. Creating a system where whichever means you as a customer try to talk to me, we're going to see it in the same system, index it on the same indexing system. So whoever's going to analyze what I was complaining about can look at the same place and get all the information they need to analyze the situation. Mm -hmm. And of course, core. Of course, if it's a text, it's easy to read. It's a voice, it's a sound message or a voice recording. They're going to have to listen, except we're using artificial intelligence to convert that, that <laughs> recording into a text uh -huh. and to summarize it based yeah, on I, whatever it might was. as well if it's a 15 minute message man i hate listening to 15 minute messages come on exactly one minute message maximum just tell me what you want me to know i don't want to hear your life story <laughs> exactly it has to be when you're analyzing that you don't need to listen to quiet time you don't need to listen to the same thing three four five times on the same call so you can read a summary. Okay, there's relevant information here. Then I'm going to listen to all of this. That's very okay, cool. That's both... a good idea. Okay, so this is what we're trying to do. And at the same time, most of the companies today have a CRM, a customer relationship management system. Mm -hmm. So if I can identify that that call came from Bruce and he has a record with my CRM, I'm going to attach that call to that or that event doesn't matter if it's a call or a text message to his uh, uh, record in our in my CRM. Mm -hmm. So the information that has been exchanged through a text message or a call is going to be stored there. Okay. There's another thing that we're doing with messages is if you look at your WhatsApp, in our case, we just exchange a message into a topic, into the same topic. For most of the people, you have one conversation in your WhatsApp with several topics. If you have to go back and find something. It's hard. 
It's hard. It's very hard because yes. you cannot tag that message to a topic. Okay, right. we're gonna do that. It's already in progress. We should very release cool. it by the end of this good. year. Very good. So I, I want to take even, a moment. I want to take a moment and ask Lucas, Lucas Mateos, how are you? I want to know, Lucas, do you have any questions so far? Lucas, do you have any questions? I think it was a bit, you I can't hear you very well. Uh, you can talk in any language you want, Japanese. We can do it. We have a little transmitter, just changes it. No, but speak a little bit louder, please. Speak into the microphone. Um, it's still a little bit low. <laughs> oh, there you go. You got it now. Okay, go ahead. É, mas em relação a, a segurança, por exemplo, tem meios que não tem como monitorar e garantir com que haja segurança. Tipo, o que fazer nesses casos? Ok, well, there's, there's a few ways that uh, well, there's a lot of fraud. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not sure if we're connected, Lucas, when I talked about the volume of frauds that we have in the system today. Let me just do something here. My, I can hear my voice much better than yours. Let me just change my configuration here in my computer. Just a second. Yeah, I can hear your voice well, John. And I could hear Lucas's voice at the end there. No, now we can't hear you. Here, here's the deal. Okay. And this is why I don't like. This is why I don't like Zoom. Mm -hmm. It takes control of my computer, so I want to use this microphone here, uh -huh. but it doesn't allow me. It's using the the microphone of the computer. Uh, okay. So I'm listening to my voice here as well. Yeah. So, anyway, it's good because then I can see if I'm making any mistakes in English. Uh -huh. But anyway, <laughs> uh, Lucas. Uh, uh, Security and fraud are a big issue in telephony systems, okay? There's the functional fraud where people use the vulnerability of the system by design, not by technology, to fraud, okay? And I was explaining a way that I can seal your password using the telephony system as it is today. But I'll also show you and please don't go doing this, but what the hackers do is to, to steal money from your company, especially for a PBX, for companies using a PBX, is there's something called a premium rate number in a lot of countries around the world, the Netherlands, Palestine, Cuba, Korea, some parts of the US, Africa. So what, what you do is, if you call, if I call this number, I'm gonna pay a premium price. I'm gonna pay, let's say, instead of 50 cents of a dollar per minute, I'm gonna pay $10 a minute. And these premium rate numbers, what they do is they're assigned to companies that provide information free of charge but you have to call them and that call is very expensive okay so what i do is as a, as a fraud a fraudster is i go there to uh, to korea and i buy a premium rate number where i want to uh, provide information about um, chopsticks contests in korea whatever that is so I buy that number and the phone company there will give me a kickback of 50% of whatever they make for in, in incoming calls for the calls they get to my number. And I say, well, 
Nobody's calling me. Nobody's interested about chopstick contest. Whoever eats faster, we're using chopsticks. Okay, and that's true. You, I'm not kidding. Just go after after we finish here. Look in uh, Google for premium rate numbers, and so people are not calling me. So what do I do? I download one of their uh, maximizing tools, whatever they call it, which I run out of my computer. And what it does, it crawls the web to find unprotected telephone devices to uh, uh, invade them and place calls to, my, to these numbers. Okay, so that's a way to do fraud. And mm -hmm. people make a lot of money out of it. Okay, um, I, I can I can share with you, Bruce, and later on you can share with people some some uh, news articles of companies in the U.S. going bankrupt because of the the the, the phone bills they got after wow. they've been frauded for a whole month. Okay, wow. before they discover this, the U.K. has the the Scotland Yard has a department that investigates these types of fraud, mm. okay? And here in Brazil, I don't know if you notice, you know, as you walk on the streets, those metal boxes with a lot of cables, small cables, that are telephony, the old system telephony switchboards, which are still in use, where you see a guy sitting down there with a, a pair of plugs connecting to a lot of cables there, this guy could be frauding your number mm -hmm. because he's he goes there and places a call from to Cuba out of that box. Okay, there was a case in Ribeirão Preto a few years ago where people got fifty thousand phone bills for calls placed to Cuba. Those were fraudsters invading physically this box and making calls uh, to. To uh, to these premium rate numbers, okay. I have a question for uh, you. Do we truly have five G connection in Brazil now? Well, I will talk about that. That let me just finish Lucas' okay. questions about security. So this is the functional fraud. Now there's the technology fraud. Mm -hmm. uh, the system nowadays are technology wise much more protected than the functional fraud. Okay, so for example. We, in 10 years, that CP Pulse exists, actually 12 years as a product, 10 years as a company. We've never been, none of our customers have been technology frauded because there's a lot of protections that we put in there. Okay, and, and we have a lot of concern about that. Uh, there's a lot of money involved in telephony system. Not only the information that can be exchanged there, but the phone bills can be very expensive if the system is fraud. So mm -hmm. there's several protections against the DOS. That's where when people try to overload your system with uh, connection requests. Uh, there's protections against backdoor entry. There's protection about SQL injection talking technically. Uh, there's protection there's cryptography on the phone calls. There's the now uh, CP Pulse, the first company in Brazil to adhere to this uh, uh, certification, the digital certification that Anatel has, is gonna be imposing by January 1st. So it's 100% safe. Nothing in life is 100% safe, but, but we give a lot of attention to that topic, okay? So, uh, we use the, the uh, MD5 cryptography in the passwords that we use, but if you use a password such as mudar um, dois, três, change one, two, three, which is one of the most common passwords, or admin, admin, admin for the user, admin for the password. Yeah. It's unfortunately, it's very common, okay? And there are sites in the, the web that will help you find easy passwords or systems without password that you can fraud. Unfortunately, that's a reality. Okay.
Okay. Now, sp speaking about 5G, okay, the problem with 5G, 5G, uh, the, the biggest, the highest, the capacity is on a communication system. The less, the, the, the least distance it can get through. Okay, so a 5G antenna has a connectivity range of 500 meters. A 4G antenna has a connectivity range, direct uh, uh, view of three kilometers. So it's, the radius is, uh, it's uh, six kilometers. A 2G antenna, a 3G antenna, I'm sorry, it's 15 kilometers, okay? So the problem with the 5G is the density to be economically viable is the density of the demand that you have. It pays out in Avenida Paulista and in Sao Paulo and most of the places, but as you go out to the interior, to, to small cities, it doesn't pay out. It's mm -hmm. too expensive, okay? So the cost of technology and the amount of devices that you have, in my point of view, will not make it viable for the whole country, okay? If you also, if you look at the technology, the move from 5G, 4G to 5G was too fast and the investment made in 4G did not pay out yet for most companies. So now they have to compete with 5G and they're already talking about 6G in Europe. Yes, 6G, man, come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah, so technology, it's, it's, advancing much faster than the ability to pay itself out yeah my phone is only good for 4g i can't get 5g but my wife has yeah. a, a 5g phone but most of the time it's connected in 4g probably okay yes. okay so if you go out to vinhedo for example mm -hmm. you probably will not get for, um, for example i work in Florianopolis here now I have two phones. One is in 4G, the other one is in 5G, 3G. 3G? Okay. Yeah. Because. Are they the same carrier? No, no, they're not the same carrier. Okay. But I'm still using 3G here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the other thing is interference. Okay. 5G has a much shorter wavelength, which gets more interference. So when uh, I feel. If you get the rain, the type of rain you got on Sunday night, you probably don't have a good, you won't have a good connection, a 5G connection. So I'm not saying that's not going to work. I'm saying that it's not going to work as fast or be implemented as fast as we imagine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, the backbone to connect all the devices. It's not Wi-Fi, it's not wireless technology. It's cable technology. Cable? Okay, which cable, yeah. Mm. Yeah, you need cable to connect all the, all the devices, mm -hmm. okay? It's just too much, too much data. And one of the things that is happening, and this is a bit philosophical, if we as human beings tend to use more than we need to get our jobs done. So what's happening today, for those old enough who can remember Word 2.0, which could work on 256 megs, and now we have the same, basically the same product, the same application that needs four gigabytes to work, getting the same work done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if if it's available, available, we're gonna use it, and we're not gonna be concerned about being effective on the use. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's human nature. Yeah. We only we're only concerned about things that we don't have in in plenty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not that I'm against five G. It's 
But it ha everything has limitations. Everything. Yeah. So, and and frankly, I think four G was was suffice was sufficing enough for us for our needs of today. Yep. Okay. Um, Marcelo, do you have any questions at this point? No, I enter in the middle of the talk, yes, so that's I am okay. listening and try, try to understand better. But I, I agree with the, the talks that John talked about security and technology. And I have one question only about the connectivity. You think about, you told us about the backbones are connected by the cables. Okay. Yeah. But we are we have new technologies by satellite as Starlink connectivity system. So there is different from the the cable model and works everywhere. You think in the future, if there is the future, we use satellite satellite connectivity instead cable. Yeah. Well, the problem the problem with the satellite connectivity is that. To be effective, it has to be lower, okay? okay? And to keep a satellite up in low orb is very expensive. So it's it's still cable. It's by the vast majority, the biggest carriers of, of communications in the world today, okay? okay it's, it's, it's not that it's not gonna work, activity. but it's gonna be a mix, okay? And, and if you if you if you look the amount of satellites that that um, what's the name of uh, Elon Musk company? I certainly yeah, lost yeah. already. What do you mean it's lost? It's astonishing. Okay. What do you mean lost? They fell to earth. They fell to work. They they disintegrate before they fall down. Right through the or atmosphere. they stop working. Yeah. So. Uh, Would you say he's lost a lot? Yeah, about. 8% of what he has sent up already, it's not functioning anymore. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, cable are not secure. You, if you, you look up in the map of, map of cables and that, that's available on the internet and somebody wants to make a terrorist attack and destroy a cable, it's, it's going to be harmful to communications okay we had an inks we, we had an accident in a cable connecting a huge janeiro to north of fortaleza through the sea and that affected the communications the whole country so mm. it didn't stop but again it's all integrated so anything that happens to one cable the traffic will will be moved to the other one so it's going to be it's going to be a mix between cables uh wi-fi 5g and and uh satellite communications okay i'll give you an example about wi-fi you uh, some phone systems that work in 4g you can see on your cell phone if you dig into the configuration something called lte lte yeah. is using wi-fi uh, available Wi-Fi to to connect to phone calls, to public phone calls. So that's, I mean, and and then Bruce, I go back to the to the fixed uh, phone lines. It doesn't it's not be any different? Okay, the technology that we use in in our fixed line to get two devices to communicate is the same as in the five G. The same principles of the five G and the Wi-Fi. So 5G is gonna be a, a way to connect to devices, which are gonna be talking or sending messages or sending videos or whatever you wanna send. Mm -hmm. Okay, so whether it's a fixed line, the fixed line or the wi or the wireless communication, or just the main where the, the data flow, but the, the software, the application will be the same. Mm -hmm. And the biggest difference today is when the mobile communications came out, because the technology were fundamentally different, they had to develop different systems. But today is the same thing. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 It's 
So for example, I'll give an example, quick example. Uh, one of our customers here in Brazil, which is starting their own mobile services now, they have to adhere to regulations for what we call the, uh, in Portuguese is interceptação legal, there's an English name, but I forgot right now, which is the following. A court orders to intercept whatever call I make or receive. Okay, if it's in a, in a phone system, in a, in a mobile system, I have to, that mobile can be anywhere in the world, but the company that owns that mobile phone needs to adhere to that. So they're using, in this customer of ours, our module to, to make the interceptação legal, uh, where we use on the fixed line, they're using on the mobile line as well, because the same technology, okay, it's the same, it's the, it's the same principle for mobile and for fixed line to connect to two devices. In this case, three devices. Mm -hmm. the, the legal authority will be the third one, just listening to what whatever we're talking. Okay. And recording and using AI to interpret what we're talking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, guys, uh, we do need to stop for tonight. We've reached our, our time. Um, greatly appreciate everybody coming. Greatly appreciate your time with us, John. I know you're a busy sure. guy with, with a big company there, so I appreciate it very much. I know you're coming no to problem. me because you're your wife. <laughs> no, actually. No, I, but I... she's a great person just like you. I appreciate um, the one she did recently, too, about customer experience. It was very nice. You guys yeah. are uh, top level people. So I appreciate your time and your energy to, to inform people and to give people an opportunity to listen to something in English and to think in English. That's the purpose of our, our live presentations is to, to provide that. So the recording yeah. will give other people that could not be here today the opportunity to, to also listen along. So thank you, John. Yeah. There are so many things I wanted to ask you, but say. You have so much information to answer one question. It takes a little while because it's so much information to respond to. Well, to wrap up here, first of all, if you have any other additional questions, you can send it to me, well, Marcel or Lucas, you send it to Bruce and he'll send it to me. I did prepare a presentation, but I prefer the, the direct call. I can send it to you, Bruce. Okay. It's This topic is, is very interesting because if you look at uh, your <laughs> your cell phone today and you look 10 years back, it's completely different. You have much more power in your hands that you used to have uh, a few years ago. So this is something that is changing very fast. Five years ago, we wouldn't be having this call in Zoom. Mm -hmm. Now Zoom is one of the biggest communications company in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you sh surely remember the BlackBerry. Yes, I had one. <laughs> the safest communication device in the world. And yet it failed in mm -hmm. less than three years. It went from, from zero to start to zero in less than three years. Wow. Yeah, and that's and that's the what technology does if you don't mm -hmm. keep up with it. Okay, so now, so you've shared some interesting things with us. Greatly appreciate it, John. You have so much knowledge to share, but we don't have enough time tonight to do more. Yeah, I just ask you not to get any wrong ideas and start frauding because. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, I don't it's know. Easy. Like I said, I need to be careful about posting this because you gave good information about how somebody can get into other people's accounts, man. <laughs> yeah, but. You can do it on online. Is get much more information. A lot of other ways to do it. Yeah, that. yeah. Well, you okay. can just do an internet Google and, and find out that information. Yeah. So, yeah. so everybody, greatly appreciate your time and hope you had a good time listening to John and uh, listening to his input about telecommunications and how much things are changing. I mean, my goodness, so much, so much. So yeah. Just want to say good night. Uncle Bruce is saying goodbye to you guys. And John, thank you again. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Sure.
Thank you. Bye. Nice bye. to talk to you. Bye. Bye bye now.